Good afternoon and welcome back to the action from table two. This time it's a matchup between Dave Fernandez and Stevie Dempsey, the number two on the tour. Playing against the um, one of the England stalwarts been playing in the England setup for a number of years. Again, should be a great game. We've seen some crackers on here today already. And I expect nothing less from this one. Stevie Dempsey goes in his favourite. But should be a great game. And good evening, Pierce. How are you? Doing great, mate. How are you? Very good, thanks. First time we've commentated for a while. Yeah, it's been, I think, good. <laughs> Can't even remember the last time. <laughs> We've got a good game anyway. We do. We do, the hammer. Up against Salsa. What a great name. I'm interested to see what we're going to see from Stevie this weekend. Obviously, last time around, brand new baby, and I think probably didn't give a, as good an account of himself as we're, we're used to seeing from Stevie Dempsey. Nobody needs me to sit here and tell anybody how good he is, but be interesting to see what hammer we see this time around. Lots and lots of, uh, of action in and around the arena now. Scott Gillespie's on the hill against Ian Alley. Ian Alley off the back of a incredible win in the uh, money match scene just last weekend against Sean Storey yeah just finds its way into the pocket somehow probably shouldn't have but he hit it at the right pace to give it every chance and now should be plain sailing to get across the line in the first frame. Oh, that one's just over hit slightly, but uses the yellow. Very nice start. Solid. The clock getting the better of those two. I think that was 20 minutes in and there were only a couple of frames on the board, so that one was never getting all the way. Another solid break from Stevie. Hammer by name, hammer by nature. Yes, indeed. Great yellow on the top rail here, just to give the other yellow a, a bit of a nudge, just to bring it out. It didn't want to hit it too hard. It's just about perfect. Opened up everything on the table now, and they're all there. And Dave Fernandez will be fearing the worst. These races to seven, it's important to get off to a good start, but when you just don't get the opportunity at the table. Just needs to give the eight some consideration. Think about the ball that he wants to get he wants to leave as his last ball to get on that eight. Eight doesn't go to the bottom left corner. And that probably would be the natural path that he would usually take. And of course, on one of these three balls are on the right hand side. So he's probably gonna try and leave the one to top left to get onto the eight. Or he could leave on to bottom right. He wouldn't have taken this pattern if the eight wasn't where it was. That's for certain. This is not the natural way to take these balls. It's all about that eight. Yeah, that looks okay if he's on the one to middle. 
think he is. If he's not, he's still got work to do, but I'm pretty sure he is. And he can just leave an angle and just screw down the left-hand side of the table for the eight ball. He's just going to pop this to middle. Probably screw back three or four inches to leave a, a nice angle. And he just played it with top, but that's the same effect. Probably just a bit more angle than he'd like, but very grippy cloth. He can nip into this. See him digging right down on that cue ball. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah. Yeah, about as good as he could have done that. Cue ball should be running naturally towards the red. Nice. Break from Dave Fernandez. He lost the cue ball, but problems on both sets, though. He's got the red. It's covered to the bottom left by the yellow. If you go yellows, there's problems with those as well. The one kind of central nearest us is obviously covered to its natural pocket on the right-hand side. I think I'd probably maybe just favour reds here, but in question, what are you, you going to do? Yeah, it's going to take yellows. I think he's favouring <laughs> yellows because it's easier to play either to kick this one out now, as he's done. Yeah, it's a good shot. Yeah, I think he had more options just off the starter ball there with the yellows than he did with the reds. First proper look we get to see at Salsa. Probably one of those players, Nick, that you know we expect you know has all the game to go really deep in one of these tournaments and we're just waiting for that one event for him just to kick on. Yeah. Yeah, he's been in the England setup for a number of years now. You know what you can do. It's just that little lack of consistency sometimes. It just sets players apart. It's okay. <coughs> Has to run into the eight ball here. He just needs to judge the cannon. Oh, forgot to pop. That's the consistency I was talking about. He was so worried about the cannon on the eight ball and getting that right. He didn't want to push the eight down into the red and cause himself more problems. And Stevie got is it the <coughs> angle here. Can he play a loss of turn? I think, I think he can. I think he can also play. I think there's a gap in behind that that yellow. I think he can play it cushion first off the back of the yellow and open the pocket up. Oh yeah, he can. It's further out than than I thought. It's a good shot. He's got a nice angle here. He can screw straight back for the one on the cushion as well. Get rid of another one of the problems. Didn't want that to sit on top of the yellow, just makes it slightly hampered queuing, but doesn't need to do anything with the cue ball, you can just drop this in. Yeah, it was afforded a little bit of grace with the position of the red over the left middle pocket. Played into the cushion, but again, judged it well. I know for a fact on my uh, local pub table, 
<laughs> it's not having those. <laughs> no way. Sometimes you can play it into the heart of the pocket and it still doesn't go. Yeah, my local pub table's more like wacky races than <laughs> hit and hope at times. That's the perfect start though for Stevie Dempsey. Three frames done. And it looks like it's going to be all three in his favour. John Rose pulled a frame back against Phil Parkin, but Phil's still 6-3 ahead. Ryan Fleming now 6-1 against Josh Kane. Jack Whelan, who's also just come back from, uh, from China, recently landed. He's playing Andy Williams. He's won the first two frames. Another big break. Gets everything moving, but it's dry. It has to be one of the worst feelings in this game when you hit them so well. I mean, he really couldn't have done any any better than that. And that's it's the one part of the game where you do need a bit of luck. He's had a touch of fortune where he's landed, though. Look at this. I mean, he may have a yellow, but who want to go yellows here? They are absolutely horrible. And that's why we see Dave Fernandez just tying up a red. Yeah, it just pulls back and I wonder if there's, I wonder if it's worth risking the plant to middle on the reds. If you get on reds, you've, you can have a big advantage. I don't think you will. No, just a safety. I think this has become a case of what you don't want to be on rather than what you do want to be on. Yeah, it's not the problem with the, the red that's over the pocket down to the right hand side. That you could deal with that with a loss of turn shot. It's more the two yellows on the left side cushion which are causing the problem. He's left a long one for Stevie if he is tempted. He's got one to bottom left. I think he's going to be taking it on. No. Nope. Just playing it up and down the table to tie up another ball. I mean, let's be honest, when you're 3-0 up, you don't mind taking seven or eight, ten minutes off the, off the clock. Yeah, I was going to say, when you're 3-0 up, you, you don't need to be the aggressor. No. The flip side to it, De Fernandez does. Because, as you can see at the very bottom of your screen, the match timer won't stop. It'll keep ticking. Left another attempt there. Stevie didn't take the last one. Still doesn't take that one surprised in a way I just thought you may just want to establish yourself on reds even if it's just taking one ball off the table pop the ball and then play a, a safety off the next one I guess with the reds and yellows tied up on the left hand side it's probably even Stevens now well that's going to be a loss of turn shot, is it? No, he played the red first. Oh, sorry, he did play the red first. You're right, sorry. So he's fluked it, so it's a legal shot and he's on reds. And you can just run in behind these, just release. Yeah, that's a good shot. Release those reds and, and leave it safe. And now you've got to think that reds have a big advantage now. Don't get too many frames like this on Ultimate Pool. Kind of brings me back to the the old days a little bit, a little yeah. bit cat and mouse. I really enjoy these frames actually. As you say, you get so few of them. It's just nice to nice to see a contrast. 
and just watch the players use the, the tactical side. Well, surely it's time here for Dave to pull the trigger. Everything there. The only thing that will be in his mind is that he needs to clear that bottom right pocket. He can't leave that. I guess he could leave it as his last ball, but he won't want to. Yeah, I think he's gonna want to try to get rid of that red. Yeah, pretty soon. I mean, you could you could leave it as your last ball because the eight does go to bottom left, but just to see how he goes about these. I think naturally he would have preferred to leave this as his last ball, but he doesn't really have much of a choice. It's just the problem with the angle of that red to the bottom right. <coughs> is he can't avoid contact with the yellows, so you're, you're kind of trusting the luck a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if he plays the plant here, this could go horribly wrong. If he plays the cue ball off the cushion first, it could go horribly wrong. This is tough. Yeah, it's one of these finishes that maybe not as presentable as first thought. He's committed now. He's had a, he's had a bit of a touch there. I think he's going back to your. I think he's going to have to leave this one, like you said, Nick, for the for his last ball. This isn't easy. No, it really isn't. So. He's not got a great angle here. Yeah, I tell you, if he's if he has no angle, it looks very straight to me. I don't see. All he can do is is, is come come straight back in a line and maybe aim to yeah can find that gap between eight and yellow. But this needs to be so precise. Everything can go wrong with this shot. Yeah, he needed. Did, he, did. To, he didn't catch up. No, did not time it at all well. And this is a pure frustration shot. He's got it though. He's got oh, a double he's... kiss in, and he's on the edge. <laughs> wow! 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 There wow! There you go. Goodness me! I mean, that could have just gone so wrong. Even if he, I mean, it kind of double kissed in and held the cue ball there. If he'd have hit it any other way the cue ball was probably going to be stuck behind the yellows one more match to get underway in the round of 64 and that is Ronan McCarthy and Luke Sanjis a decent connection from Dave Fernandez. lost the cue ball but Again, kind of similar to his last break, it's problems. Yeah. It is problems. I mean, he's got a yellow to middle. He could release the yellow on the side, on the left side cushion, but he's still got the problem with the two on the right. He's got openers on either yellows or reds, but I mean, what's your pick here? I mean, I think looking at the table, I'd probably just favour reds, but I'm not really... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, it looks like Dave agrees. Well, that works. Oh, he's had a bit of a result there with that little flick. Hasn't he ever? Can he, can he just... Can he nip into this one on the left-hand side enough to... Yeah, I think so. He's looking at something else. Is it a double? No. No, he's just going to pull back. I think he's left this yellow to middle. And if he yeah. has, you'd say that's a bit careless. It is careless, yeah. Didn't take a lot of time over the shot. Kind of took it for granted slightly.
now. Stephen no longer has that problem on the right hand side. He's only got that yellow on the left and he's got an angle on the ball to middle. But he can dislodge that uh, problem yellow. So this suddenly is half a chance. Yeah, and depending on the angle he has, the, the little trap I've seen. It's going to take a yeah, double. Take a double. It does afford him position to the, the ball at the bottom of the table, so I can understand why he's taking it. Just finished the touch straight. He needs to refine that angle on the ball to, to middle to be able to move the yellow on the side cushion. He'll want to do that while the yellow is still at the top of the table because that gives him an option if it goes wrong. It's difficult to see how he's going to manage that now. gap maybe he's just going to leave that yellow for a double yeah, I think with every ball he takes off the table his options reduce every mm -hmm. time it's one of those you probably just see what angle you've got I mean it does double he could leave an angle to try and get it out but it's awkward to get out with the red above it coming from below it it's a hard ball to get out so I think it's going to have to be the double oh, he's over hit that yeah um, he had the right line I mean he could have played to, to get it out there yeah yeah I, I preferred trying to get it out off the ball he's just played rather than trying to get position on this ball I mean, I've never personally just never been a fan of trying to cannon a ball out and land on the same ball. Yeah, double it is. Just needs to be careful with the cue ball here. Doesn't need to do too much with it, but he needs to get the cue ball out of the way of the yellow, so probably just going to try and screw back a few inches. Yeah, the cannon onto, sure. the, onto the red. Yeah, very good. That was a well worked out finish. Tomorrow we'll see both challenger sections kick off. We'll see the women's pro and challenger series in action over the course of the weekend too. We bring you coverage from all four of those events throughout this weekend. All will be live and will be here on Ultimate Pool TV. We mentioned the, um, the Chinese eight ball, the masters that's been going on over in China over the last couple of weeks. <coughs> Seeing the um, when I watched back some of the final last night, um, it, was a, it was a bit of a marathon, so I only got to sort of fast forward through some of the frames. And my goodness me, that uh, the guy who won it, is it Bing Ji? I mean, what a player. I mean, he is just phenomenal. I've never seen anybody with a cue ball quite as accurate as, as he has on, on a table, which is. It's fast, it's tough to play on, the balls only just go in the pockets. I mean, he was sublime. And looking at his, his numbers over the weekend, he had something like three foul breaks, whereas some players have 30. And his, um, his clearance from like, when he had an opportunity, cleared the table something like 96% of the time over a couple of weeks is phenomenal like they're yeah, frightening they're machines absolute machines yeah it's great to see it, it's almost robotic yeah it's great it's, it, it's just it's just perfect pull it's great to see the, the game in all forms growing 
have to be said, the big announcement we had just not long ago of Ultimate Pool USA and what's going on in America. Very excited to see the Louisiana Open. Yeah, and a lot of states uh, sign, of signing up to leagues as well, which is fantastic. I mean, USA is obviously a hotbed for pool, and it's always seemed to me that they are absolutely crying out for someone to take it by the scruff of the neck. Uh, like APA just... They just seem. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I've not got that much experience from, but from what I've seen, it just seems like a shambles. It's like the, the some of the rules that they've got on there are absolutely ridiculous. Like, just. I mean, I've heard some of the rules that they play, and it's just like, oh my goodness. And just poor organisation. And yeah, look, I'm I'm really excited to see what Ultimate Pool USA do and you know bringing international rules to the American game and yeah obviously it'll be the game that we know here but with a different type of table and a different type of balls and different equipment yeah, yeah. and and you know it it's almost the culmination of the bigger picture because the bigger picture is the, you know this rule set international rules you know there's obviously a reason why this is based in and around the rules, the APA rules that they play in the States and that they play in China. It appeals to the to the mass market. It's a great rule set. I mean, the only difference really between this and the American game is obviously no jump shots. Um, but generally it's it's pretty much a very similar rule set so the Americans can, can just take to it straight away. Absolutely. They can be familiar with it. Yeah, we've seen some big names signed up anybody wants to keep an eye on that will be from the 19th to the 21st of April in Shreveport, Louisiana oh wow Steve. goodness did not expect that yeah it'd be great to see him back on the table after his health problems it's a tremendous break I think no decision to make on these this color set. It's not. Yeah, yeah. this looks a, a lot more straightforward. He's got the yellow on the right side rail. He's got the one at the top of the table, which is a bit of a straightforward. But those two kind of link to each other. So, oh, careful! Oh, is he giving a bump? Careful! Oh, he's in no man's land. There. It, it looked like he was trying to can in that yellow, but it seemed a bit unnecessary. Unless he was trying to play on the one that's directly above the eight ball I think that's what he was trying to do because that obviously links to the other you know the top of the table I mean what do you do here he's got he's got a fag paper thin cut into the left center pocket I'm not even sure it's cuttable from where he is but that's a bad I mean it does also cut to bottom left but that looks like it's in off yeah the, and even even if you do manage to mess the end off the eight ball's that way too yeah <laughs> Yeah, this really is the definition of no man's land. Yeah. Yeah. He's turned everything back over to Stevie. Yeah, I don't I don't hate that. Stevie's got a lot of work to do with these two reds. It's better to pull back there, but you still can. Phil Parkin finally got across the line seven five against John Rowe. So Mullaney's gone ahead against Shane Thompson now three frames to two Tom Jones Dylan Leary is still a close one Tom's 4-3 ahead and Paul Clax won the first two frames against Liam White Stevie has gone hyper aggressive there he's got one of those yellows out Fortunate. Mm. I'm sorry he's left the cue ball. And he tried to play the, the loss of turn. The fact the red didn't go in doesn't 
really make that much difference. I mean, I guess it gives Stevie a... Oh, he's well, actually, yeah, he's giving him an angle, isn't he? Yeah, it? he's not just about to say. That red not dropping. He's giving Stevie the angle. And he can play across the face of it, straight into these reds on the right-hand side. He may even... I'm saying may oh. even to... Might have been some value there in actually trying to move the yellow rather than the reds. Because if you move the yellow out, both the reds are on. What's he got here? You've got the top half of the middle pocket for a double. How'd you fancy that one? He's got the. I, he can see the potting angle of this red. Wasn't sure if he could. Certainly take a braver man than me. Yeah. So now. Proper chance for Salsa Dave. Yeah, it's a little bit scrappy this frame. Yeah. I think the yellow just below the one he's playing now, I think it does pass into the bottom left pocket, past that red. I think he's got half the pocket to play for. to judge this well. Oh, that's okay. That is okay. He's got that yellow now into the bottom right. I'm entirely sure that's what he was playing, but maybe he was. Yeah, I would have to say he was probably trying to miss that red off. Come back out. Yeah. But it works. It's given him an angle to get at the top of the table now if he wants to get to the one in bulk. He's had to run. Would you leave the double? Would you try and land it? I mean, it's, it's got a big angle here. I don't think you can hold in the top half of the table unless he plays the back double now. Yeah, I think if he's going to play the double, he's got to play it now. And he could play this with a right hand side and just run up and down the table just leave it somewhere even around the eight spot would be well, he's given himself a chance I mean that's a, a tough shot a tough shot he's left him does he need to I don't think he can play well does the eight go from there I guess it does yeah it's close enough to the pocket that he must be able to cut that back so he can just focus on the pot he's going to be a little bit hampered here yeah felt with the tracer side he could have got further across the, to the right and that was a very tough shot it was he's left the plant but it's an awkward plant definitely not one you relish looks like he's targeting the ball in open play these are tricky though Playing off the cushion, just slightly off straight. Beautiful. Lovely pop. Yeah, pumped it in. Shane Thompson now has lost four frames in a row. Peter Mullaney leads him 4-2. Maybe that China hangover kicking in. Declan Brennan, two frames to nil. In front of Chris Hampson. Stevie Dempsey really just needs to make sure this pot. Julie dispatches it. I think this frame's going to hurt Dave a little bit. Stevie made enough mistakes there to, you know, really to make Dave favourite early on in this frame. And Some of the players really could be, uh, could be a game changer. It's got the potential to be a game changer. For me, it was one of the pivotal moments for Ultimate Pool because if they get that right, and all the professional players are saying, what a great table, we love it, then 
that's going to be all the endorsement that it needs. If they get it wrong and everyone goes away from the first weekend saying it's no good, then that is a proper nail in the coffin. So I think it was a massive risk to take. But if they get it right, it sounds like they may be getting it right, then it, it just could be a real game changer. You know, I think the big difference with it has been it's been player led in terms of they've they've had the best in the game, test it, change it, say what they like about it, what they don't like about it. Yeah. You know, it, it hasn't been made from a purely commercial standpoint, it's been made for playability. There's some features on it that I think are top class again. It's not my place to divulge what they are, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure where we are in terms of, you know, sort of releasing information about it, but um, it does just, trust me, it sounds like it's going to be a well, great piece of kit. Well, a little birdie told me today that we're weeks away, maybe a couple of months, but not, not any more than that. Yeah, maybe for the next event then, next event June. Maybe. Yeah, quite possibly. What a couple of weeks we'll have <laughs> off the back of that Pro Series because mm. no sooner will the crown a couple of Pro Series champions but the World Championships will be upon us straight away after the Pro events and the Challenger events and the ladies events in June. After the conclusion of these games we will bring you two more matches on each table. Well, Dave Fernandez is definitely still in this game. He gave that all the beans. And um, it looks like it has to be reds. The yellow, you know, it's the left side cushion. It does present a problem. But there's a couple of reds on the cushion which kind of balance that out. The reds aren't ideal, but has to be taking these chances. Yeah, I think he has to go reds. I yeah. mean, he could play the double on the yellow, the difficult yellow, straight away. But it's a it's a high tariff shot. I think that's the reason why he's gone for reds. Gone off, gone straight after one of the tricky ones. So he's going to take all these three balls in in bulk and then try and leave the one down the left side as his penultimate ball to get onto the the red that's in the middle of the table but then you've got to get across to get onto the eight some work to be done in this that's a decent angle that's pretty good i mean you could make a case for leaving the the ball on the cushion as your last ball to get across for the eight but it's not ideal oh, that's he's left a big angle yeah it's more angle than he would have wanted mm. And he can play it dead weight. Yeah, it's, it's not going to go in like that, that's for certain. Just seemed to play it quite quick, quickly there, didn't he? You need to give that a bit more time. You can actually tell, I know we can only see the very bottom of his legs, but the frustration there, just in the body language. Absolutely. I'd be fuming. I mean, what a great chance to get back to 5 4 there. <laughs> Having a laugh with someone in the crowd. Yeah, Andy Dart sat watching. Andy from way down in the West Country. They come up to every event. Him and his wife come up and watch. Camera in hand normally. Yeah. Stevie to do. Sean Sharkey's leveled things up over in the main table, four frames apiece. Levy Barker. Yeah, Dickie's gone 4 0. 
Peter Mullaney's on the hill now. He's won six in a row against Shane Thompson. It'll be a big result for Peter Mullaney if he can get over the line. Well, this is the wrong angle for Stevie. This has suddenly become quite difficult. You can see there, that's probably about as much emotion as you'll get from Stevie, but what do you do here? I mean, is there he, could take it, he could take the yellow top left. Yeah, I think he's forced to, isn't he? He'd take it top left and come off the side cushion to come to the one at the bottom of the table. Or if he can hold for the one above it, that's even better. No, miss the pot. And where he left it, he was betwixt and between anyway. Dave actually has the angle here to go into the eight ball. If he wants, he, he doesn't have to, but yeah, he opted not to. I suppose it's a very doubleable position. Yeah, I think I think he's just well from, from the angle where he is now, he's just going to have to land on it, come above it, just come above the uh, the middle pocket, and leave it straight. Get the weight. Right, we've seen that the pocket's going to be generous. Not that generous, Dave. Goodness me. I mean, he's hit the cushion about six inches from where the ball was. It, it, it didn't even look like he got down on that shot properly. No. No. He just got down and hit it. There's a few times now that he's played a shot which just doesn't seem to have given the, the care and attention that it needs. Steve has just landed a fraction straight on this. I think he can force an angle off the. He's going to screw it back off the cushion. Loads aside. Oh, the middle pocket. What's that middle pocket. Oh, wow. Goodness me. Still drama in this game. I don't think I'd have given that away with what I've seen Dave miss so far. <laughs> no, sorry, Dave. <laughs> few shocks today from the ducky's point of view that's a super break exactly when he needed it oh I tell a lie sorry I thought he made a ball for the life of me I thought he made a ball wow well that is that could well be a massive turning point he nailed that break so I couldn't believe nothing went in Those are the types of things that just, <laughs> that can really get to you. Yeah, Dave just needs to be careful here. This is another one that could unravel. Just needs, I mean, they're all there. Very makeable finish, but just needs to give it the respect it deserves. Again, that ball just died off the top cushion with the side that he put on it. So he's left with a pretty big angle. Should be okay. Mm. Cue ball is most definitely not on a string here. Yeah, careless again. This is awkward. That's probably about as good as he could have hoped for. finish we've got in store here who would have seen this coming about 15-20 uh, minutes ago it's all one-way traffic to Stevie in a three-frame lead there and that has evaporated somehow yeah and we'll be left with six minutes just under six minutes and 40 seconds left of this match and we're all square five frames apiece On the main table, we have a similar five frames apiece between Sean Sharkey and Eddie Barker. Oh, good break. Yeah. But again, 
which has happened so often off of his breaks. What a layout. Clusters everywhere. And we're going to have to keep an eye on this clock. Because a frame like this is not what either player would have wanted to see. I think Dave's going to be surely just running in behind the eight ball here. Yeah, nice shot. No value in, in trying to attack there. Is, is there value in ball in hand? It's hard to see from the camera angle. I think if you've got ball in hand, you put it below these to get... Well, we're not going to fight that. Yeah. I was going to say, put it behind the two yellows at the bottom of the table and then just split them, split one of the balls out and leave the yellow, uh, leave the cue ball frozen to it on that yeah. side of the table. But as I say, we're not going to find out. And Stevie managed to make one. And he's just tied mm. things up a little bit more. There's mileage in this frame. How aggressive do you want to be, Dave? Well, surely he was trying to leave an angle there to screw across into the balls on the side, but he's finished just off straight. He can still force it across, but I would have loved to have had more angle than this. How's your luck? Well, he's got one of them. It's not going to help him much, though, because the other one is tied up horribly. And you've got to say that Pendulum possibly just swung back to, to Reds. Yep. So if he carries on attacking here and you feel that, yeah, I was going to say, you really can't. I was going to say, has he left an angle here on the, on the red to middle to knock the other one out? But I don't think he has. Yeah, it's just going to, it's going to be a little containing shot. So that's the key to the frame, those two balls on the right hand side. Do you, the player, want to want to take a chance here? I don't think they will. I think they'll be happy to tie it up. I mean, would you would you want to take a six red from here? It, it, it's it's an interesting one because you don't want to go too early because if you don't get them, you're going to leave your opponent to go at it. And obviously, you know, do you, do you settle for a six red? We're inside four minutes. I'm not sure I like that shot from from Dave. I mean, he's just brought the eight ball out, so it's potable. I mean, Stevie's only got that one ball that's a problem, and it's easier to develop the red than it is the yellow. He's got balls above it. If he can find one good pot in a positional shot, then he's going to be a big favourite in this frame. And that eight ball was tied up, and he's left the angle. I think he's just got enough here that he can... Well, has he? Is he a bit too straight? Maybe he's just a bit too straight. Yeah, let's just pull back. Yeah, any kind of angle there, and he would have definitely gone, gone game because any contact on that red had to uh, the yellow had to promote the red down table. With each pullback, there's more time goes off the match clock. Oh, that's lovely. I mean, there's some big targets down here for Stevie to hit. The problem for Dave is he, he has no obvious breaker ball to no. get this yellow out. And no. I don't think the doubles and when the doubles not on. surprised me that he's gone for that one because if he, if he misjudges it he's bringing the red out yeah brave so yeah. getting back into that that space i think we're going six red it's hard to see anything else i mean i mean stevie's stevie can't be aggressive we'll just give him where the eight ball is Stevie can't be aggressive given, and Dave can't be aggressive given where the yellow is. It's yeah. the, the, I, I don't. Was he going for it? Surely not. Oh, he's just flicked it out. I mean, when you've asked I the question, kind of, I kind of get that. I kind of like that as well because he's just thrown the gauntlet down and said, "There you go. If you miss, they're all there for me." And that eight ball is absolutely horrible for Stevie. So. Stevie has to go for these, Ooh. but not leave enough time for Dave to make the counter clearance. This could be game here. If he gets this right, he could take the red to top left, 
pot the yellow, leave himself on the other red. Can he? Has he got it? He get. Oh, oh he's, he's missed, missed it. But he's not left anything. Oh, this. But this is a problem for Dave because if Dave can't, surely he can't, he can't get saved. Now. Surely he goes faves. Stevie Dempsey's going to have just over a minute here to, to mop these up for the win. What can what can he come up with? He's just trying to kill as much time as possible. But Ste no, this Stevie's there's Stevie's got enough time. He's lost. This he's, is game. This is over. Oh, he, Dave will be absolutely mortified. I mean, Stevie can take all the time in the world. He's got four balls to pot in a minute. Wow. wow. <laughs> did oh. we see a finish in this game? Wow. No, I, I, do you know what? I didn't. And that, that, that ultra-aggressive shot from Dave Fernandez has cost him this frame in this match. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, I mean, I don't know. I suppose it's easy for us sitting here, but I think at that point you you probably settle for six red. Maybe. I mean, maybe he just... I mean, there's players that hate the six red as well, so maybe he just said, look, I'll throw the gauntlet down. If you don't get it, then... Is they're it, there for me. Is but it not too big a gamble? I think it's a. I think it's a huge gamble. But as I say, if you if you, you know, if you've tried a few six red shootouts and your best time forty three seconds. Oh, well, true. <laughs> maybe you just had to go for it there. I mean, he. You got to say he's a bit unfortunate. The fact that when Stevie missed, he didn't leave Dave anything. Yeah. And if he'd have left any kind of shot, then then Dave was favourite there. Yeah, I think we're gonna. Dave Fernandez is going to be a little bit sick on that, but Stevie Dempsey with an opportunity he was not expecting. Advances through to the next round. Nick Finn, thank you very much, mate. As always, a pleasure. I need a lie down after that. <laughs> <laughs>